There is hope. That's what you came here to understand. The most suffering that we go through can open the doorway for the most joy. In the most suffering, as you can bring it to conscious suffering, the more awareness you can bring to your suffering, the more opportunity for awakening. Hello, and thank you for joining our podcast, Hope to Recharge, a show that is designed to bring hope, inspiration, motivation, and some practical tips to those that are battling depression and anxiety, and to those that are supporting loved ones that are going through the journey in this difficult time of depression and anxiety. I'm here to tell you, you are not alone, and we will live beyond depression and anxiety. We will share our stories one story at a time in a world of mental health together is better. I'm your host, Matana. Thank you for tuning in. Hello and welcome to Hope to Recharge. Today is Attitude with Gratitude. And as you know, I'm very addicted to gratitude. And one of the things that I feel that I'm missing is the gratitude mindset that I start my morning off with a meditation. I met David Shiner. David Shiner was a part of a mastermind group that I took and I heard him speak and I didn't really know a lot about him. David Shiner is a chiropractor. He grew up in Queens, then Long Island, and now he's in Arizona. He built up his chiropractic work around Atlanta and other parts of the USA. And then he lectures all over. He doesn't only click us into place with our body. He also does our body, mind, and soul alignment. And I heard him speak and he was talking about meditation. And I said, oh my gosh, I need to have this guy do meditation with me. Am I a guided gratitude meditation? I'm going to start practicing this because I really believe that as much as we practice something, if we have the real intention with a guided meditation, it's just going to explode the experience afterwards of the gratitude that we have throughout the day. So I reached out to David and I said, David, do you mind doing a guided gratitude meditation for us that we can listen to whenever we're ready to have some a little bit of a boost in our gratitude? So he said graciously, yes. So thank you for joining us, David. You're welcome. He woke up very early in the morning to be with us. I think it's like 6.30 in Arizona, and he probably woke up an hour ago. Uh, he, se- he seems like a guy that really wakes up before the sun. Is that true? I think so. I don't, I don't um, it's in the dark in my room, but I think it's, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty early. Yeah. So David, give us a little bit of a background, please, about how you got into the spiritual part of the world, like meditating, connecting to your soul, to your bigger than us energies. Yeah. So when I was real little, I always had this knowing that there was more to life than what we were exposed to and what we're told we ought to be doing with our life, with our career and all these different things. So when I was little, I was always enamored by people and their stories and wanting to know more about them and also searching for what makes people tick from a spiritual level. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I was little, my mom would bring healers to our home and they would host spiritual weekend workshops and retreats. And I was exposed to Native American wisdom and ways of being and meditations. And that started me, that sparked my journey into digging deeper. Were you always so calm? Because you seem like a very calm person. Does every, anything get you upset? Well, it just depends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm part of the world, of the, the world, and I'm exposed to everything that everybody else is exposed to. And <laughs> so it's a good question. I bring it back to it's always a matter of how do we, how are we able to stop ourselves in the moment, which is all that we truly have is, is this moment. Mm. And that's all that there ever is, even though that we're taught that there's a past and a future. And I'll bring some of that into the meditation in a little bit to have the gratitude for the moment. And knowing that even though there are these things that are going on, 
what am I going to allow to affect me and how am I going to allow it to affect me? And can I stop myself before the ego takes over and reacts to whatever it is that's happening in the moment? Because it's easy to be affected. Is it something you think is in your nature or you develop that muscle of calming yourself down? Like you could get upset, but it'll take you three seconds to calm yourself down. Or is it just like you're very, very calm by nature, but you took it to the next level of extreme being in the moment? So, yeah, I was always interested in that stuff. I call it stuff, right? Mm -hmm. In being a mirror for other people so they can see the, the true essence of who they are inside, I guess, a reflection of how I'm being calm. I was always told this, mm -hmm. oh, you're so calm. And mm -hmm. family would tell me and clients that I work with, you're so calm. And it's something that we all have inside of us. I equate it to a pond. Mm -hmm. And there's this beautiful pond that's a, that's a still pond. And we have that, all of us inside. And there's all of these things that we'll be exposed to that are the different stones and rocks and pebbles mm. that if we if they're dropped from the sky into the pond, then they'll have all these ripples. Mm. And how soon will the pond again become still? So yeah, it was always of this nature, mm -hmm. yet I live in this world with you and everybody else, and we're exposed to all of these things, especially today. It's more and more apparent how much suffering and how much trauma there is in the world, yet there are these things that we can do to grow and expand and become still and have gratitude. Mm. Do you have children? I do. Were there, do they say that having you as a father is a dream because you're so calm? I'm like thinking if I can have that calmness that David has, my kids would probably be the happiest kids in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, you know. I don't think that they would say that. I don't think that they would necessarily say that because parents play a certain role. And as much as we try to be a certain something for our children, they still press our buttons and we'll press their buttons. And they'll see me as the typical parent. I try. Yeah. <laughs> they'll probably, maybe when they become parents, if they're not parents yet, they'll see the bonuses of having a ultra calm father that works on himself and works, it's constant work and they see that you're working. That's, I think, the biggest lesson for children that they see that their dad is working on himself constantly. That's true. And my oldest, Matana, is, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Matana. It, it, but Matana. Amer yeah. Yes, I love it. And my oldest is 24. She's in chiropractic college in the San Francisco Bay Area, and she's going through a lot in her life right now. One of the things is anxiety, and she's having a lot of anxiety, and we just had dinner twice last week. I'll see her again. I'm flying into the Bay Area tomorrow to lead a workshop for students at the chiropractic college that I work with. It's an open house day, and I sat with her at dinner last week, and I was bringing her through some of these calming exercises and recommended certain things for her to investigate and read. And she said, I'm looking for a mentor in my life. I said, that's wonderful. Mm. You don't have to look any further than within yourself. Oh, wow. And just that's to, so true. Yeah. So that's so true. Did she accept it? She did. And she went to a bookstore to find this book that I recommended for her to start reading that will help her recognize what anxiety truly is and where it comes from and not that it's right or wrong and it's something to get rid of or mm -hmm. something that's bad it's right. yeah so she did she accepted it i think what one of my yoga teachers davira that i owe so much of my well-being today i used to sit with her after yoga i used to do the yoga every single night it was my my ritual, I, I, a night wouldn't go without yoga because that's what relaxed me into going to sleep and getting rid of my depression and anxiety. 
And I used to say to her, Davira, I need a healer. I need a healer. And she said, you are your healer. You have all the answers. I said, but I don't have the answer. And she said, just listen to yourself. Sit in quietness. She said, you're so busy running away from your pain that you're not listening to your pain. She said, the pain is there to tell you something. So you have all the answers inside you. And I used to fight her on this. And I used to say, no, but the fear, I can't heal. I can't feel the pain anymore. And she used to say, feel it in order to understand it, to heal it. And that's basically what you were telling your daughter. All the answers, you are your biggest mentor. All the answers are in you. Just sit there and listen and connect and you're going to get it. Exactly. And that's exactly correct. And there are teachers, there are people that have the ability to point us in certain mm-hmm. directions. Right. And then ultimately that last arrow is going to point to us, to you. Right. Correct. So I say they were, they, were my, they were my GPS. They told me what turn to take, but I was the driver. Yeah. Yeah. And I called them my GPSs because I was lost. I was really (laughs) lost and I needed to know, guide me, guide me. And they really helped me. So I I agree with what you told your daughter, but sometimes you need somebody to just hold your hand through the darkness because it could be really hard. It could really be hard to find your way to to the you. That's right. Yeah. So David, I want to jump in because I'm so curious to do this meditation with you. I'm going to let you take over. I'm going to be quiet until we're done with the meditation and then we'll discuss what it was like. Okay. Sounds great. And so one of the things that I'll start with is a quote by a popular 13th century poet by the name of Rumi. And one of the things that he said is who could be so lucky who comes to a lake for water and sees the reflection of moon. So how could I be so lucky being one of the 7.8 billion people on the planet today and being part of your podcast? So thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So those of you that are listening, you can sit in a comfortable chair and you can have your feet resting flat, both of them on the floor, legs uncrossed, arms uncrossed, and you can put the palms of your hands facing up or facing down, whatever is most comfortable to you. And you're going to start by taking a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, a second deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And one more deep breath in through your nose and let all of the air out through your mouth and just push a little bit more. There's a little more air in there. There's always a little bit more in life to discover and to uncover. And you can close your eyes. You don't have to tighten the eyelids. You can just allow them to rest gently together. And I want you to have a sense of your body and feel your body resting in the chair. Notice the bottom of your feet touching the ground. Feel your palms of your hands on your knees. And just know that you're being supported by the chair or the couch and you're being supported by the universe. And know that it was no accident that you showed up here to the planet. And I want you to visualize trillions of sperm swimming upstream, similar to salmon swimming upstream, attempting to find their way home. 
so the salmon can spawn and they can have more eggs and more salmon will be born. And then the salmon that are born take the journey to the ocean and bring your attention within and visualize the trillions of sperm swimming upstream. And there's trillions of them and a few of them start taking the lead. And then there's one that makes its way to the egg and that one is you. And it could have been somebody else sitting in your chair in your seat right now. And then that sperm impregnates the one egg. And you can see that right now. And there's a flash of energy and a flash of light and a flash of life. And that one sperm that made it, that won the race that you're visualizing impregnates the egg. And those two cells become one and they divide and multiply. And in nine months, you're born and you can visualize yourself coming out of the birth canal. And it could have been somebody else, yet here you are. And you're in this hospital room and they give you to your mother and your parents are crying and you're being held by your mother close to her chest. And you're visualizing your mother holding you so close to her chest and you feel so loved and so comforted and so warm. But you forgot what you came here to do. And what you came here to do is to have an experience of wonder, an experience, a life experience of excitement and joy and fulfillment. And as you notice yourself, and right now you're seeing your mom holding you in the hospital room and there's a movie screen and you're able to see your childhood. And when you fell off the bike and you scraped your knees and you came home and your mother comforted you or your father, or there was nobody there to comfort you. So you had to comfort yourself. But I want you to see on the movie screen that there were these years that went by and you went through grade school and you went through high school and perhaps you went to college. And on this movie screen, you see the loves, the relationships that you've had and the successes that you've had and the failures that you've had and the ups and the downs looking for happiness, striving for neutrality. Can I have a week that goes by with no trauma? And you see on this movie screen, your life up until now. Until this now. And the movie screen becomes, even with your eyes closed, a mirror. So with your eyes closed, you can see this movie screen, which has become a mirror. And you're looking at yourself and you're asking yourself the question, have I accomplished what it is that I came here to accomplish? Do you remember what you came here to be, who you came here to be? and looking at yourself in the mirror and answering honestly that question, am I being 
who I want to be? Am I being what I came here to be for myself? And if the answer is yes, wonderful, continue on with that and keep going. If the answer is no, that's wonderful because you still have opportunity to be exactly who you want to be for yourself. Most people strive for perfection. There's no perfection to get to because you were born that way. So see yourself in the reflection of the mirror on the movie screen with your eyes closed, that you were born perfect. You created yourself in your mother's womb. Every cell, every tissue, every organ, every part of your body, your hands, your feet, your face, your limbs, you created yourself. So when you see yourself in that mirror, in the reflection, in this meditation of gratitude, know that you were born perfect and you are perfect just the way you are right now. Have gratitude in the knowing that nobody else created you. You have that spark and essence of life, of God within yourself, of the universe, of the great spirit. And you use that energy to create yourself. So then I ask you, what else truly is there to do? There may not be that much that there is left to do, but there may be much left that there is to be. And Shakespeare said it wonderfully to be or not to be? That is the question. And I've taken it a step further by saying to be or not to be. That is the answer. So where you're sitting right now, take a good look at yourself in the mirror on that movie screen and accept yourself for who you are and how you are. And as you look at yourself and accept yourself and practice self-love through acceptance, you're going to create a space around yourself, a space for transcendence and ultimately freedom. To step into that space of freedom and accept yourself for whoever and however you are right now and accept others that are in your life for whoever and however they are right now. And go ahead and take a look at your reflection. And you may see yourself a little bit differently and having that gratitude just for being here and creating yourself and being able to now go experience the world with a newfound sense of gratitude that it could have been one of those other sperm that you saw that won the race, but it's you. So take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth with your eyes closed. Another deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and one more deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And before you close your eyes, excuse me, before you open your eyes, thank the person that you see on that movie screen, which is a reflection of yourself for coming here. And no matter what you've been through up until this point, you're, you've made it, you're still here. And you can slowly open your eyes and enjoy your day. Wow. Wow. So many 
emotions right now because the meditation was nothing to what I thought it would be, which was exciting because I'm like, okay, where is this going to go? I thought it would be more of um, specific gratitude, how to open the energy for gratitude. But I, I need to share something with you. I told you that I work with an EFT guru or tech, tech, what do you call it? A technician, a EFT healer. And I won't miss an appointment with him no matter where I am in the world. I, I, I make it a point to have my weekly session with him. And I feel like he gives me alignment. And one of the things that we're working on for so long, for so long, and my session is uh, in a few hours today, and I'm so excited to share this with him, is he keeps on telling me, Matana, you need to be. Stop the doing. Just be. You're not a well-doing. You're a well-being. And I said, but I, but I could do both. He's like, no, until you'll be okay with the being everything else around you is going to be blocked. You need to practice it in order. And I'm thinking, here I am, I'm, I'm like, I'm so good with gratitude. I'm, I do it every morning, every night, all through the day with my little sayings and I, I notice it. But the truth is the moment I stop with the lists and the list and the to-do and the to-do and just be in the now, really present and be grateful for the now not worrying about tomorrow, not worrying about 10 minutes from now. Just be grateful for the now. That's the ultimate gratitude. That's the ultimate opening of the entire energy for gratitude. That's right. And I never saw the relationship between it until this meditation practice because, but that is really it. Be in the now, be grateful for the now, be grateful for everything that led you from the moment you were created to the now. And when you're present, it's when you realize that everything is perfect just for where you need to be now. That's all there is. So you got it. Wow. It's amazing how all my, my dots always connect. I love watching it because they always, always connect. I don't even invite it. I just, like, I smile. When it happens, I smile. I'm like, oh, that's what it is. So <laughs> you really connected the dot for me. And it's not about making so much of the lists of gratitude. And, like, let's find, let's find, let's find. The lists come naturally after you're just grateful for the being. That's it. And everywhere that we are, no matter the geographical location, you can tap into that essence of gratitude. And there are no problems in the now. The problems reside either in the past or the projections of those past problems into the future, which is where most people reside. Mm. A lot of these things melt away when a person can find themselves in, in the now, in the present. There's a stillness that's in the background always. That's where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. From that background of stillness emanates everything that we have in our world. If we can take a moment to connect with that background that's always there, that stillness, and be in touch with that. Shakespeare also wrote of one of his plays was about a comedy. Mm -hmm. And we can find ourselves having more humor at what's going on in life and with people, not that we're judging and, and that, oh, it's so funny what people are going through. No, it's not that at all. It becomes humorous to actually observe what's happening in the world and all the drama and all the negativity and all the complaining and all of these things that's part of real life. And also be able to create the distinction of what can I do with my life so I can become more of the silent watcher or the observer to see, well, what is happening and how can I grow and how can I expand and things of this nature. Very interesting. So I, 
I'm going to play a little bit of a devil's advocate because I know a lot of our listeners are really suffering in the now. They're going through a lot of pain of mental illness in the now. It's not the future. It's not so much the past. They're in anguish now. What would you tell them? I would tell them that meditation, a certain type of meditation, will be able to bring you to a place of hope because there is hope. That's what you came here to understand. Mm -hmm. We, as human beings... The most suffering that we go through can open the doorway for the most joy. Mm. And in the most suffering, as you can bring it to conscious suffering, the more awareness you can bring to your suffering the more opportunity for awakening. So I want you guys to know that you're going through what you're going through, similar to when the true nature of the caterpillar is the butterfly. Not every caterpillar transforms into a butterfly, yet the ones that remember that they have that essence of butterfly within them then they go make their way up to a branch and spin the cocoon and chrysalis around them. And there's a lot of pain. It's not just all fun and games in the cocoon mm. because the caterpillar is growing into a brand new species. Mm -hmm. So through suffering, through this cocoon process of darkness, of anguish, holds the most promise for this person that's going through the most suffering to transform into their true nature of who they came here to be. Mm. Basically, you're saying when someone is suffering, be grateful for that growth that they're going to be. Opportunity. Yeah, yes. the growth opportunity that's within the suffering. Within all suffering mm -hmm. is a growth opportunity. Mm -hmm. And if you can stop for a moment and become an observer of yourself and observe your own suffering in the now, notice what happens to the suffering that you're going through. So I'll repeat that. If you can, within your suffering, within your anxiety within your mental challenges stop for a moment and pause and create a gap in the thoughts of it the thinking of that and create a space to be able to observe yourself and become a silent watcher observe what's happening you're using another part of yourself to observe this you're creating an awareness of this and notice what's possible within this suffering and ask yourself the question who is doing the suffering what about you is suffering and then notice that there is an opportunity within this whole experience for growth and something more you came here for that. It's very wise words and it takes practice. It really takes practice to find even a split second of hope and, and say, okay, let's, let's disconnect for the suffering. Let's put it aside. It's going to come back to us. Not, don't worry. It doesn't leave us alone. We're in the process. But just observe the opportunity, the growth. What can I be better from this in the future? How can I overcome this in order to be the ultimate person that I can be in this world? Correct. And I'd be happy to come on again and we can do a special session for that type of thing as well. Mm, that would be wonderful because I know that for me, it was very hard. People that go, don't go through depression and anxiety or mental health, it's hard for them to understand how 
we process things and in the moment of anguish. And I remember so many loved ones would say, just think about a pretty place. Think about um, uh, the best vacation. Think about your children laughing. Think about your family. Think about love. It doesn't help because the anguish is there. You have to create the space for it. And that's really a technique that's really hard to do. But once you break that cycle, the brain lock of sadness, you create the space and then you invite a little bit more of the healing into your life. Exactly. So people that are going to listen to this, that are of this uh, experience today, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the things that I'll, I guess, leave you with, because Mm -hmm. we may be wrapping up, I'm not sure, is you can ask yourself the question, who is suffering? What part of myself is suffering? And where's the suffering located physically physical if there was a part so the person can close their eyes and then ask themselves what part in my body where is it located Mm. because there must be a part of the body that's suffering that's feeling this where is it located and when is the suffering occurring Mm. what what caused it because there's a part of this that's real. It's real. And there's also an opportunity for it to not be. Mm. So because it was once not part of the person, Mm -hmm. where is it located? And then it's also possible because it was once not part of the life that it's possible for it to not be part of it again. Oh, And therefore, it's useful to get in touch with some of those things. Mm. And then we can do some more with it at a different time. Yeah, but it's definitely a process. But it's you're very correct. Like find that location. And as you said, originally, all the answers are in us. And we can find them and we can get to them. It takes time and practice. But we have all the answers inside ourselves. Yes, and there is hope, and I'll recommend a book mm-hmm. out, out there not too many people know about, and it's called Hope for the Flowers. Mm. Hope for the Flowers. Mm-hmm. So, What is it that. about? It's about caterpillars that have this promise within them for transformation mm-hmm. to become what they all have within their, themselves, the promise of the butterfly. And we all have that promise within us and going through all the hardships and the the traumas and the anguish and the turmoil. That's part of the process and how we are able to use that to transform into our true nature, the promise that we came here with. Beautiful. David, thank you so much. Where can people find more of your meditation or your literature if you have literature? Where, where can they get more of you? Because I have a feeling yeah, that people so, are going to really ask me, like, who's this guy? Where do we find him? Where can we hear okay. more of him? So my website is my first and last name, mm-hmm. David Shiner, S-C-H-E-I-N-E-R.com, davidshiner.com. And my email is david at davidshiner.com. Okay, we'll have that in the show notes. It will be easy to click on and get to. Do you have any online um, meditations that they can access? Not currently because mine is more that I do with people. One-on-one. Either in person or remotely, Mm -hmm. one-on-one. Okay. And it's more, since it's more live in the moment meditations and they're coming from source through me. Mm Mm-hmm. Ex- specifically for what that person needs. It's not a cookie cutter. Right. Well, your listeners, since I was doing this with you today, through mm-hmm. coming through, through to you will be perfect for them. Yeah, I so believe in that. I really believe that we pick up on the energy of the person that's right in front of us and what they need. And it's just like, it's really telepathy, like telepathy of the universe. They're just, it's just feeding us. People that don't understand energy think that it's crazy, but it, when, it, when you 
operate your life like that, it's so natural. It's just like our seeing, I say when um, it's like being colorblind. A colorblind person can, can see the image, but they don't see the color. We, we as people that believe in energy, we just see the color of the energy. Everybody else sees the image without the color. But exactly. once you, and, you, and it just comes alive. It just is there. There's color. There's connection. There's energy. So absolutely. Well, thank you. I have a tremendous amount of gratitude to you for coming on and sharing your wisdom giving me an insane calmness right now. Like we really, like I got calm. I really feel the calmness and connecting the dots to me, uh, for me again, that the being is the ultimate gratitude, the being, the to-do lists are nice and they're helpful, but just be, and then the to-do list just comes naturally, not out of a force, it just comes out of the being and the gratitude. That's right. So thank you again. I wish you a very lovely day. And we will, I'm going to see what the community is asking for. And we'll have you on again in the future for the next meditation that they would like to go on a journey with you. Oh, and you're welcome. And I would love that. Have a great day. Okay. Have a great day. Take thank care. You. Thank you for joining us and taking the time to listen. I really appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button so you can hear further episodes. If you are listening to us on iTunes, please leave feedback and ratings below. Let us know if there's any topic that you would like to hear from us in the future. Bye till next time.